Hi, I'm Quantum Developer and today I'll show you a project I'm working on. Cubis. Cubis is an open source voxel sandbox game, which essentially is just a fancier description of a Minecraft clone. Cubis is written in Java using OpenGL, but right now we are rewriting it to use C++ and Vulkan instead, because both of them are more low level. Cubis also has modding support. I'm not the original creator of Cubis, but I made most of the features you see today and I worked on it for over two years now. The original creators left during last year and now I'm managing the project. This video won't contain any in-depth explanation, that's simply not possible because of the amount of features I'll show. If you wish to hear about something in more detail, please write a comment. Two years ago I found Cubus while looking for interesting projects on GitHub. I always wanted to make a Minecraft clone, but I had no idea how to do 3D graphics and I didn't want to learn it. So Cubus was the perfect opportunity. It had all the graphics stuff done or so I thought at that time, and it still had plenty of room for improvements. During my first month, I mostly worked on terrain generation. Here's what I did back then. Later, I also worked on the inventory, which surprisingly was already present in the engine, it just wasn't shown to the player. And I also did the crafting system. For tool crafting, I decided to use a system similar to Tinker's Construct, where the player can use different materials for different parts of the tool, which in turn gives different stats and effects. After taking a small break from Cubis, working on other projects, I went back to terrain generation. This time I did some caves. First I tried to make them using cellular automata, but that didn't really work out and also was really slow, so instead I decided to use parallel worms. Until then, Cubis was just this interesting little side project and I didn't put much work into it. But all that changed when I found this video. It proposed adding procedurally generated content to Minecraft and I thought that would be an interesting addition for Cubis as well. So I started by adding some procedurally generated ores with procedurally generated textures and names. And actually that's where I stopped working on procedurally generated content, at least for now. That's not because I'm not interested or something, but it's because I found that Cubis was lacking a lot of features that I wanted or that I had to implement first. For example, to add procedurally generated biomes, I first need a good biome system and that wasn't the case until recently. Actually, adding that biome system was the first thing I tried to do but it, I wasn't really that satisfied with it, so I didn't do the procedural generation part. I also added a new tree type, round trees, which look a lot more natural than the previous tree type. I also tried to add some rivers, but they were pretty buggy and also very short, so I removed them recently. I even made my own little cave update, featuring crystal caverns. Crystal caverns are just some large caves with crystals growing on the walls. As you probably noticed already in the imagery of crystal caverns, I also added a lighting system that supports colored lighting. Adding that lighting system wasn't so trivial for me because Making smooth lighting required me to interact with the shader and even then I had no experience working with OpenGL. 
So on the way I got some really weird bugs and it took me days to fix it and in the end of course it was just a single line that was wrong. With the new lighting system caves got dark and I had to add a way for the player to light them again. So I added some torches. The problem about torches though is that when they hang on the wall they need to be rotated. And until then Cubis had no good way to rotate blocks. As an additional restriction I also wanted the rotation mode to be able to handle multiple torches inside the same block. This might seem like a useless feature, but it's actually quite important for symmetry in some cases. So I solved this by just adding one additional byte of data to each block in each chunk and this byte is then interpreted by the block type which decides how many models are placed and where they are placed and all that stuff. With this new rotation system I also was able to add a couple of other block types such as stackable blocks, rotatable blocks and lately I also added some fences. Stairs are planned, but I didn't get around to work on those yet. Along the way I also worked on parameterizing all the blocks, items, recipes, biomes and all that stuff, so a procedural generation system could just simply create a new piece of content by randomizing all of its parameters. Of course, the parameters can also be read from a file. And that's the foundation of Cubis' add-on system. Using a simple syntax, you can write your own content into a file. And if you put that file into the add-ons folder, it will be loaded into the game. One important problem at the time was the render distance. The engine wasn't really optimized and after just around 100 blocks of render distance the game would start to lag. To solve this I used LOD or level of detail techniques which basically means that stuff that is further away from the player gets rendered with lower detail. And as you can see that works quite well. But sadly, because of that, I ran into efficiency problems with terrain generation. Because LOD techniques allow to increase effective render distance by a huge factor, I had to load a lot more terrain. I tried to solve this by using a more efficient terrain generation algorithm, but that didn't look any good. And of course, at the time I neglected the most obvious solution to just generate the terrain at a lower resolution as well. And with that I was able to return to good looking terrain and it's all fine now. Along the way I also did some further efficiency upgrades and nowadays the engine is able to handle 5000 blocks render distance without lagging and even on my 10 year old hardware world loading takes less than a minute. In the end of last year I found an interesting technique for efficient programming, data oriented design. Programmers tend to generalize things and this sometimes hurts efficiency and readability. And the goal of data oriented design is to combat those. Applying data-oriented design to Cubis, I was able to achieve some incredible improvements. In the old item drop system, item drops were handled like regular entities. They had hunger, health, an AI and other useless stuff. And to make them despawn after 5 minutes, I gave them a fixed amount of hunger and health and in the end they would starve to death. This also added a fun little bug, 
where the item drops would die from fall damage when they would fall off a cliff or something like that. In the new item drop system, item drops only have the variables that they really need and they are stored in more efficient data structures. I also wrote a unique collision detection method that only works on item drops because they are smaller than one block in diameter. Altogether, I was able to achieve a 100 times performance improvement and nowadays the engine can handle 10,000 item drops at once without lagging. Now onto the last important feature I added, 3D chunks. Previously the engine was using 2D chunks of a fixed height and to implement 3D chunks I had to rewrite a lot of the code. But that wasn't even the biggest problem. An even bigger problem were those LOD chunks that I mentioned earlier. Previously those LOD chunks were limited by the same height limit as all the other chunks and transitioning to 3D meant that there were a lot of additional LOD chunks above and below the player that took away all of the system's resources, most notably memory. My solution for this was to only load those chunks that were close to the surface and all chunks that were up in the air were discarded and all chunks below the ground were also removed, so in the end it stayed roughly the same. With 3D chunks I was able to remove the height limit and this also allowed me to make mountains look significantly better. That's all for now. The future is open and if you want to help me you can contribute by programming, making graphics, music or other assets giving me interesting ideas, playtesting the game, or just simply by spreading the word. For collaboration you can join our Discord server or just make an issue or pull request on GitHub. If you want to play the game, there is a link to the launcher in the description. You'll need Java 8 or higher to run it. Please report any bugs you find. I make updates roughly every couple months. See you then.